Hi, I'm Papa Joe. Thank you very much for joining me in reading today. Since uh, Indigenous Peoples Day is so close, I thought we would read a few books about different American Indian indigenous tribes. The first book is The Legend of the Indian Paintbrush by Tommy DePaula. Many years ago, when people traveled the plains and lived in circles of teepees, there was a boy who was smaller than all the other children in his tribe. No matter how hard he tried, he could not keep up with the other boys. They were always riding and running and shooting their bows and wrestling with each other to prove their strength. Sometimes his mother and father worried for him. But the boy, who was called Little Gopher, was not without a gift of his own. From an early age, he made toy warriors from scraps of leather and pieces of wood, and he loved to decorate smooth stones with the red juice from berries that he found in the hills. The wise shaman of his tribe understood that Little Gopher had a gift that was special. Do not struggle, Little Gopher. Your path will not be the same as the others. They will grow up to be warriors. Your place among the people will be remembered for a different reason. And in a few years, when Little Gopher was older, he went out in the hills alone to think about becoming a man, as was the custom of his tribe. And there it was that a dream vision came to him. The sky filled with clouds, and out of them came a young Indian maiden and an old grandfather. And she carried a rolled-up animal skin, and he carried brushes made of fine animal hairs and pots of paint. The grandfather spoke, My son, these are the tools by which you will become great among your people. You will paint the pictures of the deeds of the warriors and the visions of the shaman, and the people will see them and remember them forever. And the maiden unrolled a pure white buckskin and placed it on the ground. Find a buckskin as white as this, she told him. Keep it, and one day you will paint a picture that is as pure as the colors of the evening sky. And as she finished speaking, the clouds cleared, and a sunset of great beauty filled the sky. Little Gopher looked at the white buckskin, and on it he saw the colors as bright and beautiful as those made by the setting sun. Then the sun sank slowly behind the hills, and the sky grew dark, and the dream vision was over. Little Gopher returned to the circle of his people. The next day, he began to make soft brushes from the hairs of different animals and stiff brushes from the hair of the horse's tails. He gathered berries and flowers and rocks, and he crushed them in different colors to make his paints. He collected the skins of animals, which the warriors brought back from their hunts, and he stretched the skins across wooden frames and pulled them until they were very tight. And he began to paint pictures pictures of great hunts and of great deeds and of great dream visions so that the people would always remember them. But even as he painted, Little Gopher sometimes longed to put aside his brushes and ride out with the warriors. But he always remembered his dream vision and he did not go with them. Many months ago, he had found his pure white buckskin but it remained empty. He could not find the colors of the sunset. He used the brightest flowers and the reddest berries and the deepest purples from the rocks, but still his paintings never satisfied him. They seemed dull and dark. He began to go to the top of the hill each evening and look at the colors that filled the sky and try to understand how he could make them. And he longed to share the beauty of his dream vision with all the people. But he never gave up trying. Every morning when he awoke, he took his brushes and his pots of paint and he created the stories of the people with the tools that he had. One night, as he lay awake, he heard a voice calling to him, because you have been faithful to the people and true to your own gift, you shall find the colors you are seeking. Tomorrow, take the white buckskin and go to the place where you watch the sun in the evening. And on the ground there, you will find everything you need. 
The next evening the sun began to go down, and Little Gopher put aside his brushes and went to the top of the hill as the colors of the sunset spread across the sky. And there on the ground, all around him, were brushes filled with paint, each one a color of the sunset. Little Gopher began to paint quickly and surely, using one brush and then another. As the colors in the sky began to fade, Little Gopher gazed at the white buckskin and he was very happy. He had found the colors of the sunset and he carried the painting down to the circle of his people, leaving the brushes on the hillside. And the next day when the people awoke, the hill was ablaze with color for the brushes had taken root in the earth and multiplied into plants of brilliant reds, oranges, and yellows. And every spring from that time, the hills and the meadows burst into bloom. And every spring, the people danced and sang the praise of Little Gopher, who painted for the people. And the people no longer called him Little Gopher, but they called him He Who Brought the Sunset to Earth. Thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoyed the story. See you next time.